Hi, my name's Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you all about the new launch screen for SwiftUI projects in iOS 14. We'll take a look at Apple's user interface guidelines for launch screens, and I'll show you how I break the rules to add a little sparkle to my launches. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. When an iOS app launches, it shows you the launch screen while your app is loading. In Xcode 12, the way a launch screen is created and presented by default on new projects is different depending on whether or not you are creating a storyboard app with UIKit or a SwiftUI project. In a storyboard app, there are three things that govern the launch. There's the launch screen storyboard where you can design what your launch screen is going to look like. And there's on the general tab of your target, you must specify the name of the storyboard. And it's this name that is reflected in the string value of the launch screen interface file base name in the info.p list. In a Swift UI app now in iOS 14, the storyboard is gone. The launch screen file name is empty. And in our info.p list, the launch screen interface file base name has been removed and replaced with a new launch screen key that is a dictionary. In this tutorial, I'll focus on the new Swift UI way of doing things and show you how you can take advantage of these new dictionary possibilities. Apple wants you to keep your launch screen simple. In their human interface guidelines for the launch screen, they suggest that it should look like the first screen of your app so the user sees a smooth transition during the launch. In iOS 14, they've changed it to make this process much easier if you want to follow their suggestions. I have to admit that I don't always follow their suggestions, and I'll show you a technique I use at the end of the video to have an animated transition from my launch screen to the first screen of my Swift UI app. For this project, I'm going to be using a sample app that I created, and you can download it from the link in the description below. It does require Xcode 12, as this is an iOS 14 feature. It's a very simple app that has a navigation bar and a button that does nothing. There's a tab bar that will show three different views depending on what tab button you tap. You can see that it looks a little different in light versus dark mode. In the assets folder, you can see that I have a custom accent color that is configured for both light and dark appearances. And there is also a different background color for each mode. Let's launch this app in the simulator. When it launches, you get a bright white background that then changes to my first tab view. Unfortunately, the background of my tab view is not white, it's an off white. It's more noticeable even if I launch in dark mode. The background color of the launch screen is black. Well, my first tab view is a bluish color. We can fix this by going to the info.p list and tap on the plus button beside the launch screen dictionary and select the background color. This key requires a string and that string must reflect an asset that's in our assets folder. I've conveniently named mine background, so that's what I'll enter here. But there's nothing special about that name. You can call it whatever you want, it just has to exist in your Assets folder. Let's now run this, and you'll see that when I launch, we're still in dark mode, that background is there as the blue color. Similarly, if I switch to light color and launch again, we get our off-white color. It's a smoother transition. It's better, but not optimal. My first screen has a navigation bar and a tab bar. Now you may have noticed when we selected the background color in our P list that there were other options. Returning now to this key, let's take a closer look. I can tap on the plus again, and this time I'll choose show navigation bar. I'll make another selection for show tab bar. Let's run once more. Let me freeze frame first just so you can see it clearly. Notice how, when it launches, there's a placeholder displayed for both of those items. This is true for both light and dark mode. 
Returning now to Apple's human interface guidelines, they specify that the launch screen isn't an opportunity for artistic expression. It's solely intended to enhance the perception of your app as quick to launch and immediately ready for use. They even go on to say that you should design a launch screen that's nearly identical to the first screen of your app, to avoid including text on your launch screen, to downplay the launch, and not to advertise. I can agree with most of those points, but I actually like it when the launch screen is a bit more spectacular. We'll get to that in a minute. We're pretty close to meeting our first point. A couple of other things, though, before I go on. If your app's first screen has a toolbar, you can choose that option instead of the Show tab bar. Notice also that there is a drop-down arrow for the navigation and tab bar items. The same would be true for the toolbar. You have the option here of adding an image to be placed inside of that item. What you would have to do is design an image that would look good on all devices, though, and upload it to your Assets folder and enter the name of that image here. The problem that I had is that it's a real problem trying to figure out what that image would look like. At first, I thought I'd use a static image of the tab bar icons, but that didn't scale well over different size devices. So for now, I suggest you leave that empty. There is another option here, though, that we have not spoken about. The first point is to make your launch screen nearly identical to the first screen of your app. This may not be possible, but in my case, I always have a large image. So I'm going to add an image to my launch screen. First, let's add the key in our plist. We're going to have to provide the name of an image that's in our assets folder. In the resources for the starter project, I've included an SEG file called ctlogo. So drag and drop it into your assets folder and in the Attributes Inspector, choose Preserve Vector Data and set Scale to Single Scale. Back in your plist, set the string value for the image name to CT Logo. If you run your app, you may or may not be able to see the image displayed on the screen. I don't, and I haven't made any mistakes. This problem will most likely occur if you change the image over time, but sometimes it just doesn't work anyway, and Xcode has a problem clearing the cache on launch screens. There are a number of hacks that you might find on the internet, but for me the only way that I have been able to consistently solve this issue is to choose the Erase All Content and Settings option from the Simulator's Device menu. This is particularly annoying because you lose all installed apps and settings and related documents. If you're lucky, however, if it's a new simulator, you should be okay. So let's launch this app again, and we'll see that it displays the image in the middle of the screen and presents our first view. There is another option to respect safe area insets that you may wish to add. I'm just going to leave that for now. Now the problem I have with the guidelines is that if your app loads a complicated first view, or indeed it might be a split view or have a sidebar, then there's no way you can make it look like that. So the solution is to do something completely different, and that's to make the first screen of your app look like the launch screen, and then break rule 3 about downplaying the launch by adding some animation before it prevents your real first screen. So let me show you how I do that. First, I'm going to remove the Show Navigation Bar and Show Tab Bar items from my plist because I want my app to launch with just the image and colored background. Next, create a new Swift UI file called Prelaunch. We're going to use this file to display a screen that looks just like my launch screen. And we can do this by creating a Z stack that has a background color of our background color in our asset folder, and on top of that will be an image with a frame equal to the size of the image that we uploaded. So let's create that Z stack. Next, we'll add the color 
and we'll specify edges ignoring safe area to be all. And now we can add our image, which is CT logo. I'm going to set it to resizable. And to determine the size it should be, I'll open the SVG file in a text editor and see that the default dimensions are 200 by 200. So I can set the frame of our image to be the same. Now I need some way to be able to move from here to our content view. So I'll create an at state variable called show main view and initialize it as false. Back in our body, I'll set a conditional. If show main menu is true, we can show our content view. Else, we'll show our launch image with the background. The problem is that I want to create an animation that will transition from the launch screen view to the content view by toggling that show main view value. The way to do this is to embed that if else block inside a group. And then on the group, we can perform the on appear function. Within the on appear function, we can create a linear animation with a duration of two seconds, just a test. And in the body, we'll set show main view to true. Now, before we run this, we have to go back to where our app launches, which is the file with the at main property wrapper, and change it from content view to pre-launch. If we run this now, it's not too exciting and it's a bit jerky. I think we can do better than this. What I want to do is to create some animation prior to dismissing the screen. I want to add some pizzazz. I want it to rotate, scale, and fade out before presenting our content view. So to do this, I need to add three more state variables. One for angle, that's a double of 360. One for opacity, another double, initialized as one. And one for scale, a CG float, initialized as one. Next, we add three modifiers to our image. We're going to rotate the image clockwise around the y-axis. This means that we'll start at 360 degrees, which is our default angle, and then we'll animate it going to zero. So for the initial state, we can set the rotation 3D effect, setting the angle in degrees to our angle property. For the axis, we're going to rotate it this around the y-axis, so it's the one that's set to 1. Next, we'll set the opacity and scale effect view modifiers to their corresponding state properties. To animate those changes, I'm going to add an animation block prior to changing the show main view to true. This too will be a linear animation with a duration of 2 seconds and we'll animate it to set the angle to zero, which means it will rotate from the original 360 down to zero, which is a clockwise direction. We'll triple the size by scaling to three, and I'll set the opacity to zero, which will fade it out completely by the end of the two seconds. And finally, we want to almost wait until the animation is over before we set the show main view to true. So we'll take out the duration here and add a delay of 1.75 seconds. This gives me an error that it cannot infer contextual base in reference to member linear. And all this means is that I have to add the animation struct name in front. I'm going to run the app once more and I get a nice animation to present our main screen. If I run it in light mode, it looks pretty good too. Now, this is against Apple's recommendations, but I like it, don't you?
I'm sure that many of you can generate better animations. Have fun. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store. And visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.